Hello, and welcome back to another episode in our month of Azure Databricks. Now today we're looking at a real fundamental of working with Apache Spark, and that is caching and persisting data. So by default, when we work with data, we're going to be loading that data into a data frame. Now that data frame is kind of held in this temporary in-memory space. But it isn't until we either call cache or persist that we actually get that data to effectively distribute amongst um, the executors in our cluster. So now there's two differences here, cache and persist. A default way of doing um, persistence. If you call cache and you call, call persist, they're going to do the same thing with the exception that persist accepts a parameter which is going to give you a lot more functionality and a lot more flexibility in how you actually persist that data. So if you want that to go to disk and in memory, in memory replicated twice, you've got a whole load of additional options there. Then the third thing that we've got in that list is unpersist. So in summary, cache and persist do the same thing albeit persist has a parameter which enables you to have more functionality and more flexibility and unpersist is what we're going to use basically to take our stuff out of memory when we're no longer using it anymore so let's take a look at this in our workspace so here we are over in azure databricks and what we're going to look at is those three things in this notebook so we're going to look at caching data we're going to look at persisting data and then we're going to look at how we remove it from our cache using unpersist. So the first thing you want to do is import some data. So I'm going to read this data in, in the normal way that we've seen before. Now, as we've seen before, what we're actually going to be doing here is not really doing anything at this point, yeah? Because Spark is lazy. So Spark is going to wait until you actually need that data before it's going to do anything. So we're not going to run anything at this point. All we're going to do is build up essentially a plan telling Spark what you need to do when you can actually do it. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to try and cache that data. Now, just so that you can see the difference here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call an action. So I'm going to call dataframe.count so that we can see the count that comes back from this query. And hopefully what we'll be able to see is that actually, you know, this data isn't going to be cached at this point. It's just being held in this temporary memory space, but we're not actually writing this back into RDD blocks, which is how we go about caching and distributing in-memory um, data sets across our cluster. So we head over into our cluster, mine is called example. If we head on the Spark UI and we go to our storage option, what you can see is that there's nothing currently cached there with the exception of this small amount of data which has been read in to um, our external memory space. So now if we head back into our main query, and what we're going to do is we're going to call cache now. So I'm going to call df.cache and then df.count again. And now when I'm doing this, this is then actually going to trigger this to be distributed at RDD block level across my executors. So we'll be able to see if we cut back into our cluster manager and we go back into the Spark UI and we have a look into the storage options again, what you'll be able to see is you'll be able to see that there's actually been something cached now. So that whopping great RDD name, that's what's been cached. What you can see here is that it's a memory deserialized one times replicated and you can see its total size. Now those are the eight RDD blocks and also hopefully what you can see here is that we roughly have about 200 meg of data albeit when we were looking at importing this data we had like 400 meg of data and that's because it's taken advantage of the in-memory compression so we can see there are various different options that we have right so moving on now we have this option for df.persist so persist is going to do the exact same thing that cache does albeit now it's going to accept a parameter now when you're calling cache what you're actually at, what you're actually calling is a df.persist with our memory only option. So let's call that now. We're going to import some new data and we're going to cache that with our persistence option. Heading back over to the Spark UI, if we refresh, what we can see is a very similar option here, albeit this is a slightly smaller file because what this has done is it's actually imported this as a serialized option. Again, what we can see is how our data is distributed across our various um, executors. And you can track that back pretty much by looking at the IP address of each of those individual executors. 
Now our last example is actually looking at a in-memory and disk twice replicated. So what this should do is duplicate our data twice across our executors. Now we've only got two. So this is going to pot all of our data across all of our nodes, which isn't a great thing to actually do, but in a larger cluster, this may be important. Hopefully what you can see is our in-memory footprint has doubled. And then we can see there on our executors that we have um, every single RDD block across both of them. Whereas if we look here, what we had is we only have one executor attributed to any single RDD block. Now the last thing that we have is unpersist. So if we run unpersist and hit back into the Spark UI, what you should be able to see is that that particular block has gone. And then if we run it again on the last two, we'll see that we've completely flushed the persisted cache from this particular cluster. Albeit when we go back in and have a look, what you should be able to still see is that we have still got that memory held in this kind of temporary memory space. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to put a like and subscribe on YouTube and we look forward to seeing you on the next video.